this is your first time to the channel, welcome. My name is Scott. I am a practicing physician assistant working in endocrinology. I'm also a type 1 diabetic. If you're interested in diabetes-related news, tech talk, product reviews, please go ahead and subscribe. I'm going to be coming out with new content all of the time. And if you're enjoying the content, please go ahead and give the video a like. I'd certainly appreciate that. So as the Dexcom G7 gets closer to release, we're getting more and more details about the CGM. And I just heard of a very big update, a few really cool new features that I wanted to go over today. Now, this isn't going to be a full review of the Dexcom G7. If you're interested in that, I did do a video. I released it a few weeks ago. I'll leave a link in the video and you can check that out. This is going to be the newest information we have on the Dexcom G7. So there's a few new features that were just recently announced. So most of these have not been discussed before. And that's what I wanted to go over today. So there was a new study that was published. I believe the study ended around February 14th. It was done by Diabetes Technology and Therapeutics. They released a bunch of information about the Dexcom G7. The study was to basically investigate the accuracy of the G7 compared to other CGMs and blood glucose levels. Um, they released a bunch of information. It was just recently published, so this is all new. But in the study, they also released information about the Dexcom G7. And most of this information has not yet been released. Most of the, the stuff that I went over in my previous video was all of the information we have until that point. But these are some new features and new things that we didn't know about up until now that they released in the study because the individuals in the study were obviously using a Dexcom G7. So that's what I wanted to go over today. Five really cool new features that were discussed in the study and kind of go over what they mean for the CGM. And I was really excited to go over that. So as soon as I saw this, I made a quick video because I wanted to talk about that today. So let's get into it and let's talk about probably the most exciting thing the thing I had on the thumbnail that maybe got you to click this video and that's the fact that this is the first time with a CGM that you can silence every single alarm I'm talking about every alarm including the urgent low glucose alarm which up until this point you really could not silence definitely not on the Dexcom I know not on the Libre um, unless you were using the reader of course but on a phone you could not silence the urgent low glucose alarm it was something that was locked in you couldn't change it this is the first time a CGM is going to give you free flexibility to basically turn on or off any alarm you want to so if you're in a meeting you're sleeping whatever it is you're in school you want to make sure your alarms don't go off and start buzzing and beeping in class or you know any specific event you're in that maybe is just like a more private situation that you don't want your alarm going off on your CGM you can now do that with the Dexcom G7 now, as a little side note, it does list that it's uh, temporarily shut off. And what temporary means, when if you look into the details of this study, it indicates that it's for a six hour period. So that's gonna cover most times where you need to shut it off. Even when you're sleeping, six hours will pretty much get you through the night without any alarms going off, maybe a couple hours there that you might lose out on. But um, being able to do that is really a big deal. And I know a lot of people think, well, the urgent low glucose should be on. But if you've had, if you've been woken up by compression lows and other problems that CGMs have, you kind of learn that Maybe some of those things can be turned off and maybe it's better that they are. Um, so I just like the um, option to basically eliminate any alarm you want to shut off um, and, and give me that freedom to basically decide whether or not I want it turned on or not. So this is the first time with the CGM, with the Dexcom G7, you're going to have that ability. The second thing that's really cool, and in my last video I talked about that the Dexcom G7 is going to have a 10-day um, expiration period for the sensor. So the same as the G6. It is something that they plan on changing in the future, but at the time of release, it's going to be 10 days. But what I didn't know, what I just found out in this study, was that that 10-day window actually has an additional 12 hours tacked onto it. So it's 10 days, and then once 10 days runs up, it's not like an abrupt stop. Like with the Libre or the Dexcom now, as soon as you hit those 10 or 14 days, it just stops working, that's it. Well, with the new Dexcom G7, once you hit 10 days, it gives you a 12 hour window to kind of say, all right, you have 12 hours, you need to change out your sensor, but it'll keep recording in this time and you can keep using it within those 12 hours. So really that 10 day window we talked about is more like 10 and a half. You have an extra 12 hours to kind of give you some time to change it out and it'll keep reading up until that window. So that's something I did not know previously and something that this study just revealed. So you have an extra 12 hours tacked onto those 10 days when you're using the Dexcom G7. All right, the third thing I want to talk about, and this may not seem like a big deal to a lot of people, but what I talked about in my last video is the fact that the Dexcom G7 has a warm-up time down to 30 minutes, which is just incredible. Um, previously, it was two hours on the G6, and the Libre is an hour, so 30 minutes is amazing. And again, this may not seem like a big deal to you, but to me it is. So actually, that 30-minute window um, in this study, when they actually used the product, found out that it's actually a 27-minute window. So I know it's only three minutes, but honestly, when you're getting down to such a short period of time, every single minute counts. So 
Really, that 30-minute warm-up time we, talk, we talked about previously in the other video, it's actually 27 minutes when they found out in the study. That's actually how long the warm-up time is. So it's down to 27 minutes, which is just amazing. 30 minutes was good enough, and then 27 is even better. So it's actually a 27-minute warm-up time for the Dexcom G7. That's almost, you know, we're getting down to almost nothing here. You put it on, and you go get yourself busy doing a couple things, and it'll already start working. So it's amazing, down to 27 minutes. That's another big thing that was revealed in this study. Okay, let's talk about lag time. Now, if you were a CGM, I'm sure you're pretty familiar with lag time. The lag time between your interstitial fluid, which is what the CGM is reading, and a um, finger stick is generally about 10 to 15 minutes. So you do a finger stick, and the CGM's not gonna catch up to that blood sugar for about 10 to 15 minutes. Of course, it always matters if you're running up high or you're running down low, you know, how significant that's gonna be. But generally with most CGMs, we've always said around 10 to 15 minute lag time between a CGM and a finger stick. Now in the study that they did, they found that the Dexcom G7 was down to a 3.5 minute lag time, which is just amazing. And if we actually look at the, um, the data here that they talked about, they show that the, um, the overall mean lag time for the sensors was 3.5 minutes, um, 3.6 minutes for the arm, and then 3.4 minutes for the abdomen. So that's a really short lag time, and that's really incredible. The Dexcom G6 had pretty impressive results as well. It only showed about a 3.7 minute lag time, but they say with exercise, that could actually go up to 13 minutes, whereas across the board, the G7 was coming in at only 3.5 minute lag time, which is really a big step forward and a big leap for CGMs with increasing their accuracy and decreasing that lag time, which is always a bit of a problem with CGMs. I'm sure you've experienced if you use one. So let's talk about the last thing here that was revealed in the study that I found was really great. And that's the fact that um, gaps in your data are really gonna be a thing of the past. Now, if you've ever used a Dexcom, you know sometimes there's trouble with the connectivity. Maybe your phone isn't connecting to the, the transmitter. Maybe you walk too far away from your phone, but there can definitely be gaps where you have this information where there's, there's no data for the CGM. And if you look at a graph of your data, Data, sometimes you'll see like an hour or two or it's just blank. Now that's going to be a thing of the past with the G7 because what happens is the sensor and the transmitter, they're all built into one now with the G7, actually stores that data for up to 24 hours. So if for some reason your phone senses that there was a gap in data, it can actually talk to the sensor and transmitter and gather that data, pull it off of the sensor and the transmitter and bring it over to the phone to fill in those gaps. So up to 24 hours can be retrieved so you don't lose that um, data if there's any connectivity issues or anything like that. So that's another really big deal. Um, and I know it's it's certainly nice because I've used the Dexcom and I know sometimes I'll look at my uh, readings over a period of time, I'll download it and I'll see there's these gaps where I lost connectivity. So knowing that that's gonna be able to be retrieved now from the actual sensor on the skin is really a big deal. And it's something else that I feel like is another important improvement with the G7. Uh, one final thing that I wanted to go over, I don't think this is a big deal, but I just wanted to mention it. They also did mention that the filament length, the actual uh, catheter that goes into the body from the CGM, is going to be smaller compared to the G6. So not a huge deal, but it is nice knowing that there's going to be less of that plastic inside the body. I always think that's a nice thing to think that maybe there's a little bit that may cause a little bit less pain. I know sometimes it can cause a little bit of discomfort, especially if you're laying on that side. So knowing that the filament is actually going to be shorter in the G7, plus having even better accuracy, so you don't have to worry about that, is definitely a nice thing and it's an improvement. Nothing that I thought was a big deal to include in the big five I just went over, but something that I thought I would mention. So those are the big five reveals from the study that I just saw, and I think these are really exciting um, things that we can be um, looking forward to with the G7. The huge one to me, of course, is that f uh, freedom with the alarms, being able to turn everything off if you want to. So let me know what you think. If there's anything that maybe you've heard about in the grapevine that you wanted to share with me, please let me know. But I think the G7 is really shaping up to be an awesome CGM, and I'm really looking forward to it. Again, if you want the full review of the G7, I do have a video. I'll leave the link in the notes and also leave a link in the video so you can check that out as well if you wanted to see all the other things the G7 has to offer. Again, these are just the most up-to-date from the most recent study at the end of February. And um, again, let me know in the comments what you think. And thank you so much for watching the video.